Well, hello, congregation, family and friends, and Bereans. I pray that all is well with you. Thank you for joining me on the broadcast today. Uh, I don't know if you can see it because it may disappear. I have a piece of paper here. There we go. Let me see. Where? There we are. There it is. Uh, many years ago, when I was living in Delaware, uh, I had the uh, privilege of writing a newspaper column uh, once a month called Ask the Pastor. And it was very simple. People would write into the newspapers with questions for the pastor. And I was the designated pastor that was in charge of the column. And so I had the privilege, although I had a limited amount of uh, space that they gave me in the newspaper, to try to answer their questions to the best of my ability. One question that came up that was frequent, and maybe it's a question that you've had also, is about forgiveness and forgiving other people. And the question here that they had written in was, can you tell me where in the Bible does it say that we have to forgive someone over and over again? How can any of us be that forgiving? Great questions. Does the Bible actually give us some instruction regarding forgiveness? Well, it sure does. And if you have your Bibles with you, or if you're taking notes, I direct you to Matthew chapter 18. Peter, the apostle Peter, is going to ask Jesus a question, and Jesus is going to give him an answer right back again that maybe has confused some people. And then Jesus goes on to explain through an example exactly what he's talking about. So we are in Matthew chapter 18 beginning in verse 21, and I'm going to be doing the bulk of reading. I'm not going to teach on every single verse here, but I think you will get the overall idea once we look at the example that Jesus gives. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to go all the way down to the end of the chapter at verse 35. So, friends, if you are with me, Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 21, says this, Peter, then Peter came to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Well, legitimate question. Somebody comes to us or somebody hurts us or somebody maligns us in some way. They do something. And Peter's asking, how many times do we have to forgive that person? Up to seven times only? Look what Jesus says in verse 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, basic math, 70 times 7 is how much? 490. Now, if we read this too quickly, are we saying that Jesus is telling us that we only can, we have to forgive a person up to 490 times, but on the 491st time, we don't have to forgive them? Is that what Jesus is saying? Of course not. Think about it. Who of us? Even the worst offender, perhaps, in our life, the person that has maligned us or hurt us the most that we have to forgive, do we actually keep a little scorecard or a little notebook that every time they offend us or every time they seek our forgiveness, we put a little notch down so that when we get to 490, uh, it's all over, and 491, we don't have to forgive anymore? Of course not. I don't know anybody that does that. That is not what Jesus is talking about. Peter brings up a number and he says, should we do it up until seven times? And Jesus is basically coming back almost sarcastically and saying, no, not seven times. How about 70 times seven? You, you can imagine what was probably going through Peter's mind. Are you serious? I have to forgive somebody 490 times. Well, no, no. The biblical principle is we must forgive people over and over and over again. Look, it's not easy. It's not, if it was that easy, there would be no effort involved in it. It's very difficult sometimes when someone has hurt us or hurt someone in our family or lied on us, slandered us, did something that really caused us harm. It is difficult, right? To forgive people. It's difficult to say, I forgive you. But that is what God is calling us to do. You remember back in Matthew chapter 6? Part of the Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does it say? And forgive us our debts as we forgive those, or those debtors. Well, in the King James, I think it says trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us or who sin against us. We sin against someone and people sin against us. And basically part of that prayer is, Lord, we want to forgive them as they forgive us. So as often as something happens, it... it it doesn't do any good 
for any of us to hold on to things where we're not being forgiven of people. We don't want to go into the grave not forgiving someone. It is toxic. It is poison. I know what you're saying. Hey, Thomas, this is tough to do. Yeah, it is. It's tough to do for me too. We have to wrestle with it. But let me show you an example here. And let I'm going to let the Bible speak for itself. After Jesus gives this reply back here in Matthew 18, after he says, no, I don't say seven times to you, Peter. I'm saying up to 70 times seven. Now listen to this story. Jesus, beginning in verse 23 of Matthew 18. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and his children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. You see what happened? Here's somebody who owes the king some money. He owes him something. And originally, the pronouncement was, you're going to be sold and your wife and your children. I'm going to gather all everything that I get for you, and you're going to repay your debt. But when the man prostrated himself and he said, please have patience with me, I'm going to repay you. I'm not going to rip you off. What does it say here in verse 27? The Lord of that slave felt compassion, understanding, compassion, and released him. And here it is, forgave the debt. How many of us would have done that same thing? Somebody owes us something, and instead of wanting to collect on it, we just forgive them. They're saying, I, I can't afford to pay you back. I have another emergency that arose. I can't give you what I owe you. Please forgive me. And Jesus is saying, I forgave him the debt. Done. We're for all is forgiven. Everything is fine. Watch what happens here in verse 28. Then Jesus goes on to say, but that slave, the one that just got forgiven, the one that just had compassion, that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay me what you owe me. So a fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, have patience with me, and I will repay you. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's what this first slave did to his Lord, his king there. He said, you have patience and I'll repay you. And he was forgiven. Well, his slave, his servant now comes in and basically says the same thing. Have patience with me and I will repay you. Here's the difference. Verse 30, but he was unwilling. No forgiveness there. He was unwilling and he went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. Oh, wait a minute now. You were forgiven. And then you turn around and you don't forgive someone else? Seriously? How often do you and I get caught up in that? How often do we have to seek somebody's forgiveness? Now listen, if we seek some, somebody's forgiveness and we say to them, I forgive you, or we seek someone's forgiveness and they choose not to give us their forgiveness, that is between them and God. If we say to them, I'm sorry that I hurt you, I'm sorry that I said that rumor about you, or I believed something about you, or I didn't repay something, please forgive me. Now, you've done your part, seeking forgiveness. If they chose not to forgive you, that's on them, and that is something that God will deal with them on. But I want you to see what happens here in case you're not familiar with the rest of the story, because it doesn't end just there. The first slave is forgiven. He goes to his slave, and he gives him a hard time, and now he throws him in prison until he can pay back what he owes. Well, you can't pay back something if you're in prison, can you? You can't earn any money to pay back. So essentially, he's going to be in prison for how long? Now watch what happens. Verse 31, when his fellow slaves saw what happened, they were deeply grieved, and they came and they reported to their Lord everything that happened. Uh-oh. So this guy who didn't show compassion, who didn't give forgiveness to this other servant, he just got ratted out because these other servants now went to the Lord, now went to the king there. And they went to him and said, you, want, you know what happened? The guy that you forgave didn't forgive this other guy. And now his servant 
is in prison right now. Look what happens. Verse 32. Then summoning him, this is the guy that didn't forgive. His Lord said to him, you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? No comeback from the guy. Look what happens. Verse 34. And his Lord moved with anger. Now he's angry. Rightfully so. Handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. Okay. Well, guess what? Now, the guy who didn't forgive, who didn't show compassion, who didn't understand, who didn't give a little more patience and a little more understanding of his servant is now in prison and he's handed over to the torturers. Think he was having fun there in prison? Think he was maybe rethinking his position and rethinking the stupid decision that he made by not forgiving someone? Look how Jesus empties it and finishes this out as we end this in verse 35. He says, my heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Hello? Jesus is saying, my father's going to do the same thing. You need to forgive others. So when Peter comes along and he says, well, Lord, is it just seven times? And Jesus is saying, no, it's 70 times seven, 490. Or you keep forgiving as often as you need to forgive. You seek forgiveness from others and you receive forgiveness. That's ideally how it's supposed to work. That's how we're supposed to be treating one another. If I wrong you, I must ask your forgiveness. Whether I receive it or not is up to you. That's between you and God. And if you come to me and ask my forgiveness and I say, nope, I don't forgive you. I'm going to hate you. I'm going to hold this against you. If I do that to you, then that's between me and God. And I put myself in this position also. Jesus is trying to tell us. He's showing us an example. One guy forgave. One guy did not forgive. One guy went free, debt free, forgiven. The other guy is now in prison at the hands of the torturers, and he finally finishes this, this passage by saying, my heavenly father, my father, almighty God, he's going to do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother. And you'll notice it says, from your heart, has to come from the heart. Well, I, could say, I can say all day long, I forgive you. I can say all day long, oh, I forgive you. But if I don't believe it, if it didn't come from my heart, if I truly didn't mean anything, then it's meaningless. It's almost like getting no forgiveness whatsoever. Tough lesson, isn't it? Forgiveness is one of the biggest challenges, I believe, that we as human beings have for one another because it's too easy to hold on to grudges. It's too easy to say, I'm holding something against you. You hurt me. You did this to me. You owe me. So therefore, I'm not forgiving you. Well, the Bible has something else to say about it, and I just wanted to share this with you today. I pray that if you're struggling with forgiveness, that maybe this video, this quickie lesson, this little Bible study will help you with forgiveness. I want to thank you for joining me today. Please feel free to share this video, any video that I post. This is for God's glory. It's for the edification of the saints. It's not for my own glory. It's for the glory of God. And so just remember, Isaiah 55, 11 tells us that God's word does not return void. It reaches somebody. If this reached you today, then this message right now was meant for you today. So please feel free to share it. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Share the video if you feel led. God bless you.